G'day everyone, welcome to the next episode of Governor's Hero Review Videos. Um, in this one we're going to be looking at the September 2021 Hero of the Month, um, which I'll probably refer to as HOTMs um, from henceforth, but this month it is the Hero Reaper. Da -da -da -da. So in this video I'm going to be going over his card, having a bit of a look in depth into his stats, his special skill, class, um, particularly his talent tree and how I'd build him if I was to put emblems on. Um, and then also to compare him to a couple of other similar heroes that are available in the game. At the end, I'm also going to have a quick look over of the September 2021 weapon of the month. Um, but for now, the focus is going to be squarely on Reaper. So as always with these videos, please do swing the video a like. If you haven't already uh, done so, please also subscribe to my channel so you can get alerts and quick access to all my other content, including a whole bunch of other hero review videos and then of course feel free to share these videos around um, to anyone asking about Reaper and people's thoughts on him. So enough of the self promotion, we can do some more of that later. The focus of this video is on Reaper. So you can see here that Reaper is a 5 star yellow warfighter class hero with the title of an agent of vengeance. So if we bring up what his full image looks like. Um, overall, I'd say that he's actually a pretty sick looking hero. Um, I do kind of like this kind of artwork on, um, on the heroes. Um, so the developers, I think, have sort of tried to go and take the inspiration from the Grim Reaper um, t style character, um, seeing as they've got a whole bunch of like skull masks and stuff on his, his face, his knee pads, and then on the belt buckle there. And then there's the, um, the very obvious uh, tie back with the scythe-like uh, bayonet fitting on the, the end of his weapon there. Um, I also have been a little bit lucky this month. I managed to jag uh, Reaper quite early in the month. Um, so I was able to... Well, I'm able to show what his special skill looks like um, or his animation. So we'll just play that now. Um, So it's um, one of the cooler ones. I do actually particularly like it. I think it's actually one of the cooler animations. Um, so yeah, <coughs> pardon me. I'd, uh, I'd be tempted to level him just for his graphics and his animation as it is. Um, but we're going to go back to Reaper's card because in terms of his stats, uh, when you've got a fully leveled Reaper, you have a stat base of 652 attack. Uh, 677 defense and 1,367 HP. So overall, if we look at this in terms of all of the other uh, five-star heroes in the game, these are very balanced stats. Um, there's only a slight skewing towards his defense stat uh, in terms of being away from the, the average. Uh, his attack at HP stats are pretty well smack in the middle uh, of all the other five-star heroes. Uh, with his defense stat being a bit higher up near probably the top quarter of heroes um, that are currently in the game as of September 2021. Uh, carrying on through his skill, we can see his charge speed there. It is set at 40, um, which puts him into the 12 tiles to charge bracket of slow. Um, however, if you can equip him with a plus 3 speed enhancement, you actually bring his speed or his special skill speed up to just needing 11 tiles to charge. So that plus three speed boost is actually really, really easy to achieve. Um, you can get it with the three star um, yellow gun. You can also do it with a completely unleveled Triss Vector as a four star gun, or you can also do it with an unleveled uh, Ragnarok Vantage, which is a previous five star weapon of the month. So across the board, one, uh, sorry, three through five star guns, it's actually really easy to achieve. Um, this plus three speed boost, so you can pretty much always speed break him um, and charge him in 11 tiles or uh, six ghosted tiles, uh, seeing as ghosted tiles count as double charge. So I did mention a little earlier, um, he is of the Warfighter class. Um, this is actually one of my preferred classes, um, particularly for sniping heroes, um, who usually, when you see them in defense teams, they're often on the wing. Um, where when they revive, they can really come back in, uh, and haunt you if there's other heroes that are sort of protecting them still. So um, there are some heroes that I would probably rank above Reaper in terms of um, emblem priority. I'm going to probably jump ahead a little bit here, um, but I'd say Reaper's probably up there in the second rank um, of 
uh, Warfighter heroes. The top rank, I would definitely say, are heroes like Mortis uh, and Vincent. But in that second rank, I'd say that, you know, he's sort of akin to heroes like Judge and Barbed Wire. Um, so in terms of a specific emblem path, which is probably one of the most common questions that get asked um, about heroes, I personally would be following an attack um, greater than defense, greater than HP style um, pathway. Uh, so I'll just show this. I have edited one of an existing Warfighter's hero trees here. Um, so you can see that I'd be going left, then left, uh, and then left again, left to pick up the attack node, and then right, right, and then left at the end to pick up the speed node. So if we were to follow this path, um, so it does pick up a total of six attack nodes, four defense nodes, and three HP nodes, as well as nabbing um, the speed um, boost node as well, and a final attack boost node. Um, it does give him quite a sizable boost to his attack stat, so he gets plus 101 attack, uh, plus 72 defense, and plus 113 uh, HP, which will net him, when he's at plus 20 emblems, a total stats of 753 attack, 749 defense, and 1480 HP. So, sort of re it a little bit towards the attack stat by following that path. Um, but it's actually a pretty good improvement overall, particularly for a sniper to be able to pick up that many uh, additional attack points. Um, so yeah, that's uh, how I would be embleming Reaper uh, if I was to do so. Um, as I said, there's probably one or two heroes that I'd rank higher in the priority, um, and then he's probably in that second tier of heroes um, that you can emblem. So, on to the business part of this video, which is where we start having a look at what he actually does. So, Reaper, when you have got him fully leveled up at 10 out of 10 special skill, uh, his special skill, which is titled End of the Line, uh, it will do the following at charge speed of 40. So, we'll just re-emphasize that. So, it deals 375 damage pardon me, to the target, uh, and then the caster gains a plus 25% attack until the end of the battle. This effect can't be cleared. Um, and then if we tap that little information mark, uh, we can see the additional info says that this effect can stack up to plus 100%. Uh, so that, that is all that uh, 10 out of 10 skill. Uh, so a couple things really jump out at me, just reading through his skill. Uh, so the first thing that jumps out is that damage percentage. Uh, at 375%, it is quite a big number, just in and of its own, if, just ignoring everything else. Uh, there aren't very many hitters in the game um, that hit harder than that, particularly in the yellow element. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> um, that well, they don't have a higher percentage than that. The other thing that really catches your eye is this attack buff, which has no expiration period. Um, so it lasts until the end of the battle. And then the other thing about that attack buff is that it stacks with itself up to a total of plus one hundred percent. Um, so if we look a little bit more detailed at these two um, elements of the skill, we can see that he is very clearly a sniping hero. Um, he hits one enemy and one enemy only. Um, so that basically chucks him without any doubt into the sniping category. He's not really a support hero because he doesn't help anyone other than himself. Um, so he is, for all intents and purposes, a sniper. So if we have a look at the damage component of his special skill... <coughs> Sorry. Um, there are nine other five-star snipers in yellow, um, with a total of 13 different uh, damage configurations, because uh, some of these yellow snipers have conditions on doing extra damage or doing a certain amount more damage. Um, so, for example, Cooper, he's got two damage amounts. One is just his base damage when he's hitting someone above 50% HP, um, and then he also deals an additional huge amount of damage if he's hitting someone less than 50% HP. So those are what I'm calling scenarios. Um, so if we run a quick calculation, uh, just to determine the overall attacking power, which is the attack uh, stat multiplied by the percentage on their special skill, <coughs> uh, we come up with the following list. So we can see Reaper there is kicking out 2,445 uh, attack damage, or attack power really. Um, and this is specifically on his first cast, because we know that after he casts one time, he gains an attack buff, which will improve his standings. Um, so if we look at that list, we can see Cooper there, he's up the top with uh, 3,596 attack power, 
Um, you've also got uh, Stinger. Stinger's got two entries. One is when she casts a second time while under her buff. Um, and she's there at 2,116. And you've also got base Stinger, which is 1,491. Um, so yeah, we can see in that list, Reaper is sitting overall as the fourth ranked hitter. Um, if you have Yolani at less than six tiles, um, or five tiles, I think it is, Reaper actually jumps up another slot um, to the third ranked position. So um, that list, though, is just looking at his base damage. If we then remove some of these entries and we calculate in what Reaper's damage or attacking power is uh, after multiple casts, um, we come up with the following list. Um, so you can see down the bottom there, I've now got Reaper with his plus 25% attack, 50%, 75%, and 100% attack, um, which translates to 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th onward casts. And we can see just how much of an impact that attack buff actually has. So if he casts it a second time, he still sits there in fourth position, but he has gained 600 attacking power in just one cast. If we then fire him a third time at plus 50% attack, he's now actually doing more damage output than Cooper is, um, who is, in my opinion, the best sniper in the game. Just period. There is no one better than Cooper uh, at finishing heroes. At plus 75% and plus 100%, um, the damage is just going into insane levels. Like, 4,890. Like, that is huge. Like, that is pretty much triple the damage of some of those smaller heroes. It's over double the damage of Stinger when she's got the attack buff on her um, if you cast him five times. So, it's, it's just insane the amount of damage which he can put out if you can charge him multiple times. And that is the big catch, though, with Reaper, is it's having to charge him multiple times. And we know from his special, spill spe blah, 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 special skill speed, he's only kicking it out at st speed of 40. So he's needing 12 or 11 tiles to charge and fire and charge and fire. So in order to be hitting that 4,890 damage output, um, or attack power output, you're needing to basically fire a total of 55 yellow tiles in one battle. 55 yellow tiles, which is a huge amount of tiles to be casting. Um, so you're needing quite a long period of time for that. So um, if we then sort of try to normalize him against his speed, there are a couple heroes that are slower than Reaper on my list there. So you've got Ember who and Giselle, who are both actually slower charge speed um, than Reaper is. The rest of them, though, they're all faster than Reaper. Um, the fastest is Cooper, and the slowest is Giselle. So, if I want to try and account for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the attack power, and I'm going to normalize it against their special skill speed by dividing by the number of tiles needed to charge their skill. So, if we do that, I come up with this new list, and it shuffles around a little bit. Our top three actually stay the same, but the big mover is actually Reaper there. So, Reaper moves from fourth position on my previous list down to eighth position, on a speed normalized list. And that's just because of his special skill speed. It is quite slow for quite um, the size of damage that he's kicking out. Um, we do have on the bottom of this list that comparison with him doing multiple charges and multiple firing. So after his second cast, um, when he's got a plus 50% attack, he actually jumps up to third rank. Um, if you can charge him four times, he's up to second rank. And again, if you can charge him five or more times, he's actually, again, dealing out more damage per tile than Cooper is for the fifth plus attack. But before that, you know, you've got a couple heroes who are actually better at hitting in terms of the damage per tile moved um, than Reaper is. Um, so, you know, you've got Hush, who's a vanilla hero. Um, her base damage is actually far, uh, better on a per tile basis uh, than Reaper is. Uh, but if you can charge Reaper two or three times, then obviously he is better than Hush there. Um, so I guess the takeaway from from all of this is that Reaper has quite a lot of damage potential, but it is at a slower rate. So on his first cast, he's pretty eh, like it's really limited by his speed. But if you're able to charge and fire him two or three times per fight, 
He's actually really devastating, particularly if you can combine him with the defense dropping hero like 8-Bit or Kraken. And then you're going to be kicking out even more damage. But that same scenario also applies with all of, all of our other snipers. So, you know, you win some in terms of his damage output, but then you also lose a bit in terms of his specific damage per tile moved. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's his attacking side of things. If we have a look in at the second thing that his card does... Uh, which is this uh, attack buff, specifically granting him plus 25% attack for the rest of the battle, which can stack for a total of plus 100% attack. Um, I will note that it is not always plus 100% attack. That plus 100% attack is for a 10 out of 10 card. That max will scale with that leveling as well, so it's actually a total of a 4x stack. Okay, So what that means is that if your card is only 5 out of 10, your max isn't going to be 100%, it's going to be at whatever his attack buff is, times 4. So it will only stack a total of 4 times, um, but it is still quite large. Um, and there's a couple of things that are actually really interesting to, to think about with this. So the first thing is that it's percentage-based. Um, and why percentage-based is so insane is because when you get it up to that maximum stack, you're doing plus 100% attack which means that Reaper's base attack stat goes from 652 attack to 1,304, which is huge. Like, I am talking absolutely monstrous. The best attacking hero other, like, in terms of the attack skewing, um, is actually Cooper. And, oh, I've lost that. i just got to open it quickly. If we pull up Cooper's, um, Cooper's stats... Um, just give me a second. Alright, so we got him here. So his attack is actually 757. So Reaper, with his full buff, is pretty much double what Cooper is in terms of his attacking prowess. So that's the first thing that's really insane about it and really awesome is that it is percentage-based. It's not a hard number-based. The second thing that's really cool about this is that the buff is compatible with other attack buffs. So what this means is that you can have multiple attack buffs on Reaper at once because this stackable, quote-unquote, uh, attack buff is actually treated separately to all the other attack buffs. So normally if you use a hero like Logan and Holden together or Holden and Jacob or Logan and Jacob together, their attack buffs will override each other. So the newest one will replace the oldest one. However, with Reaper, his buff is sort of separate. Pardon me, separate to that, so it actually stacks on top of itself. So not only are you getting the plus 100% attack, but you can also pair him up with a hero like Holden and gain even more attacking percentage, or you can pair him up with uh, Logan and gain additional um, attacking as well, plus 180 ha uh, attack. <laughs> so that's something that's really cool about him, is that it's unlike those other ones where it will be compatible with other attack buffs. The final thing that is really, really cool about this is that it lasts the entire fight. It has no end to it. This is actually really awesome in two ways. So the first one, as I said, is it has no end. Normally, attack buffs, they say, gains plus 180 attack for three turns or for four turns or something like that. Every other attack buff has that. This doesn't. This will last the entire fight. It doesn't matter if it's three turns, five turns, 100 turns long. You'll still have this buff at the end of the fight. The second thing that's really cool about this non-ending duration is it actually sticks around if Reaper dies and then gets revived by a hero like Terminus or Ksenia. So, yeah, you actually heard that right. It will retain the attack buff if he dies and revives in the same fight, which is massive. You don't have to start again because he dies. He actually keeps that buff. So, what I've taken to calling this style of effect is I'm calling them stackable. So, if you hear me call, referencing a stackable buff or a stackable ailment or something like that, this is what I'm talking about. So, they're new to this game and they only exist currently as of September 2021 on two heroes. So, there's the previous hero of the month, Blockbuster, and now also on Reaper. Um, for those of my audience who also play Empires and Puzzles, um, these stackables seem to be quite similar to the quote-unquote stacks in uh, ENP in terms of how they interact with normal buffs and ailments. Um, the big difference, though, between these stackables in Puzzle Combat and stacks in Empires and Puzzles is that stacks in ENP are cleared by death and revival. They don't stick around. So stackables are actually way more insanely powerful 
than the stacks in EMP, and they are super powerful compared to a normal buff. Um, so that is something that is really worth considering with Reaper um, and also with Blockbuster. So I think stackables are going to become a thing. Um, I thought they maybe were like a one-time gimmick that they were toying with on Blockbuster, but um, I think you have heard it here first that we're going to be seeing a lot more stackables, particularly on new um, Hero of the Month. So, yeah. So normally the next section on these videos after looking at their card is I'd compare um, the hero in question, Reaper, to another similar hero in the game, but I pretty much did that more or less earlier when I was comparing his damage output, because, um, yeah, there's not a huge amount different between his damage output in terms of comparing to other heroes. So if you missed it, or you fast-forwarded over it, or you forgot already, just jump into the description of this video. I've got like an index there um, of all the sections of the video, so just click on the bit which says damage comparison, and it'll jump you straight to that bit, part of the video. <coughs> the basic summary though was that Reaper hits pretty well, um, he's hampered initially by his lower slow, uh, so his slower charge speed, but after multiple casts his damage goes from eh to oh, to ultimately hero shattering. So, you know, use him at your own peril because he may come out of the screen and uh, be the agent of vengeance on you. Um, so yeah. Um, this section that I'm going to talk about next, it's kind of new to these videos, um, so I'm going to try and do it a bit more going forward. So this part of the video I'm titling, where is Reaper most useful? So where do I see him being most useful? Well, let's have a look at the different gameplay aspects. So in defense, I generally don't see Reaper being very good here at all. Um, I think he's just too slow to fire one time, let alone getting multiple casts, um, which is when he actually starts being able to be usable. Um, you might be able to cut him in there as a wing hero, but I think there are a lot of better, faster sniping yellows that you could install on the wing, um, such as Cooper or Stinger, just to name a couple. Um, I don't think he can be a flank hero. Um, I just don't think he's useful there. Um, and he definitely isn't a tank. Snipers make the absolute all-time worst tanks. Um... And the other thing to consider with him on defense is that the meta currently is to have Terminus as the primary yellow um, on a wing in defense, so he's not going to replace Terminus. Uh, in terms of raiding and war attack teams, I think he is going to be quite a solid attacking hero in a yellow stack, um, either as the major or a minor in a stack. I don't know if he's going to be overly useful in a mono team, um, because on those fights you're kind of ending it before you can get multiple casts. Um, of special skills, but I do think he'd be good in um, lesser stacks like 3-2s or maybe a 4-1 um, or 2-2-1 scenarios. He's also going to be of particular use in the really long drawn out fights where you're facing off, as Kas off against Ksenias and Terminuses, where they're kind of like dying and reviving the team and it sort of just draws out, because the longer the fight goes, the more times you're going to fire Reapers, so the more powerful he's going to actually get. War Machines um, are the next sort of part of the gameplay, I think he's going to be pretty good here, um, because assuming you get a half-decent board and you're willing to spend a couple of items, you can actually probably charge him one or two, maybe three times naturally uh, in the fight, and because he gets that um, that attack boost of plus 25, 50, 75, 100% attack, it's basically going to be like ta taking in a sixth hero um, if you can charge him multiple times, which in terms of the damage output, you're basically boosting your damage to the war machine by 20 or 25 percent which is huge so again i think he's going to be pretty good on um on war machines in terms of events uh i don't think reaper is a very good event hero um particularly for competition level uh, events i think he'd be okay if you're going to be doing just completion uh, on events but if you're going for competition he really isn't ideal because he's only hitting one enemy and in order to actually be good, you're needing to charge and fire him multiple times, which isn't compatible with competing on events because events you're trying to do it fast, as quick as you possibly can. So in terms of events, I think he's not going to be a very good hero uh, there. If we look at all the other PvE stuff, so player versus environment, so this is things like maps and spec ops and all that kind of thing, this is probably where he's going to be the most shining. Um because you're going to be able to build up his attack buff multiple times in the earlier mob waves. So by the time you actually hit the boss wave, you've stacked him up three or four times on his attack buff. So he's actually going to be kicking out maximum damage 
on those boss levels. So I think he's going to be quite a powerful hero in those environments where the time actually doesn't matter and you can take your time, build his charge, and then head into that final wave and just go absolutely whack-a-mole on the bosses. Um, the latest addition to the game is tournaments. So there are three different special rules. Um, so I'm going to split this down into three sections. So we've got charged attack, which is where the heroes are set to fire speed. So this is the rule where he's going to gain the absolute biggest advantage in the game for him. Um, because under this uh, tournament rule, he goes from being slow speed to fast speed, which means he's going to go from eh to pretty good just on his first cast. Um, you're also, because he's now at fast speed, you're going to be getting multiple casts during the same battle. So instead of needing 12 tiles to charge him, it's, I think it's only like 8 tiles to charge him. So you're going to get a third more charges in a normal battle than you would otherwise. So I still don't think he's worth using on your defense team as a yellow hero. Um, I think there's some other better yellow options like Terminus, Ember, Giselle, for example. They're actually slower speeds um, and have a similar amount of damage output. So I think they'll gain more benefit. <laughs> <coughs> on defense in the charged attack tournaments, um, but he could be usable there. Um, Bloody Battle, I think he is going to be terrible in these. Um, Bloody Battle fights are usually very short because there is no healing allowed. There's no healing, no armor, no reviving. So these fights will typically end a lot quicker than a normal raid. Um, and seeing as Reaper needs long fights, he is heavily disadvantaged by this tournament rule. So I think he's not going to be very useful there at all. Um, the buff booster, I don't think he really gets any real advantage, but he also doesn't have a disadvantage in this um, this um, tournament rule. Um, he probably gains a slight advantage as his attack buff does count as a buff, so it does gain an extra 20% because in the buff booster tournaments, every buff gives the hero owning the buff an extra 20% attack stat. So, you know, he does it doesn't really improve his positioning, but it also doesn't really ail it either. So this is the very, very brand new thing that I'm looking at possibly doing more um, in the future. So if I was to apply some rough grades to Reaper under each of these categories, I come up with the following list. So in terms of his special skill, <coughs> he is charge speed 40. Uh, it needs 12 tiles to charge. So that factors into it. Um, in offense, I would give him probably a C plus. So I should say, this grading scale, I'm using the A to F range. So A is the best, F is the worst, where C is bang on average. So a C plus is slightly better, a C minus is only slightly worse than average. So in raid and war attacks, I'd probably give him a C plus. He's probably a little bit better than average um, in terms of attacking. War machine, I think he could probably get a B plus. Uh, in events, I think he's actually worse than average. Um, so a C minus there. In all other PVE stuff, probably a B. In terms of general defense, as I said, I don't think he's a very good defending hero, so I gave him a D there. Um, in tournaments on attack, I think bloody bo bloody battle, sorry, I think is his absolute worst thing. I think he's heavily hampered by this, so I gave him a D minus. Um, buff booster, a little bit better than average, so C plus. Um, charged attack, uh, he has gotten a B plus there for me because I think he will get a bit of a boost out of being uh, fast speed rather than normal. Um, his normal slow speed. And then tournament defenses, I still don't think he's a very good defending hero, so I gave him a D- minus for Bloody Battle, D- plus for Buff Booster, so slightly better than his normal defense, and then a C for Charged Attack. So overall, um, I gave him a C- plus for offense and a D- plus for defense. So please note, these are just my thoughts. It's not gospel. It will change because everybody's roster is different. Everybody has different play style. Everybody has different combos. This is literally just my two cents to hopefully give a little bit of a guide um, as to what my overall thoughts are on him. So that pretty much finishes up the review of Reaper. Um, I don't think he is a bad hero overall. Um, I think his damage output is very, it's pretty hefty um, and it only improves the longer the fight goes on. So he really is best suited to battles where you can take some time to build his charges or where you can charge him quite quickly. Um, multiple times. So in order to make use of um, him, those are the scenarios you're looking for. I would love to hear your thoughts on him. Uh, if you agree, disagree, indifferent, whatever. Um, if you've got any uses or applications you think Reaper would be amazing at, if there's any team-ups from your roster you think he would be um, awesome with, 
um, please do leave a comment on the video with your thoughts. Um, and then, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So again, if you haven't already and you've enjoyed the video so far, do hit the like and the subscribe, uh, subscribe buttons because it does help me know uh, which videos are and aren't helpful and what content to focus on. So that finishes up Reaper. So we'll now shift over to the second part of this review, which is of the September Weapon of the Month, the Lancehead MA2021. So the Lancehead is a five-star purple weapon, um, and it says it's a variant of the Martha MA2020, uh, which is the yellow five-star master weapon gun, um, which, incidentally, the Martha is probably one of my all-time favorite yellow weapons in the game. Um, so I've got pretty high hopes and high expectations for the Lancehead just from, you know, that past experience with this gun that looks like this. So um, if we look at the Lancehead specifically, so it gives a bonus 226 attack, 215 defense uh, to its owning hero. Um, so there is a slight skewing towards the attack stat side of things, but like with pretty much every single one of these weapons, it is only a slight, um, slight skewing. So... In terms of the two perks we gain, so we gain uh, plus 30% armor damage and plus 22% accuracy. Um, so if we look at those two perks a little bit more, um, the armor damage is, as always, a fairly situational perk um, in that it will only really do anything if the enemy being hit has armor. If there's no armor, there's no additional armor damage. It's that simple. Um, at plus 30%, it's pretty much smack in the middle range of um, or of this perk, um, the perk of perks available. So the highest is plus 41% on the Athos Assassin, and the lowest is plus 13% on the Rhodes uh, block. Um, so uh, overall, the average is plus 29%, so at plus 30%, it's pretty much bang on the middle. Um, the best application, um, as always, with armor damage perks is when you're facing a armor generating hero, like ones like Horato or Panzer or Anastasia. Um, and it's even better if you can pair it up with a hero who has a special skill which is conditional um, to gain additional damage if the target has armor. So in purple, there's two heroes so far that do additional damage against armor. So those are Night Owl from the High Noon family and Sure Shot, who is a vanilla hero. Um, so if you've got those heroes, pairing them up with uh, the Lancehead MA2021 makes a uh, little bit more sense because you're gaining additional damage on your additional damage against armoured enemies, but only if the enemies have armour. So um, The secondary perk is the Accuracy perk. Um, this is also one of my favourite perks overall. It's up there with Speed and Crit and Dodge. Um, the obvious benefit to Accuracy perk is that it directly counters the Blind Ailment, um, that you can get from heroes like uh, Goldman or Vasquez. Um, and then it can also counter some of the inaccuracy that comes with Blunderbuss's buff. Um, <coughs> so if you've ever done any gameplay at all, you will know that there is nothing worse than having an enemy hero that is about to die from a single tile to hit them, and then the tile goes up and it misses. Nothing more annoying in the game, except when that hero then fires, ends the battle, and you lose, because one freaking tile missed. So, being able to counter that inaccuracy is always awesome. Um, the other possible benefit that comes with the accuracy perk, and I will say this right now, I'm not sure on this. I think, I'm still trying to follow it up with support about this, um, but I think uh, that the accuracy ailment, or the accuracy perk, sorry, can potentially counter the dodge perk from some of the other guns. So again, I'm not confident on this. I'm still trying to follow up with support. Um, but here's the reasoning for my thoughts on this. So if we look at some of the other master weapon guns in the game, um, so if I go to my roster, pull up the Martha MA2020, so we can see there under the accuracy bonus of the master weapon, uh, sorry, master work weapon guns, um, these have in their tooltip, it states that the accuracy perk increases the chance to hit an enemy with dodge. So that's pretty awesome. I love that. That's why I love the Martha. It's one of my favorite guns um, because it can counter dodge. Why I'm not confident about it applying specifically to the Lancehead MA2021 is because it doesn't actually specifically say it in the regular weapon's accuracy perk. So if we read the tooltip there, it just says... Uh, increases the chance of hitting enemies. It's not specific to dodge, so I am still trying to follow this up with support, 
but my past experience has been if it isn't actually stated explicitly in the tooltip, it doesn't apply. Um, but I am hoping that it is acting like the the masterwork um, weapon perk, um, but I just don't know. So, <coughs> yeah. So where does that leave the lance head uh, overall in terms of as a five-star purple weapon? Well, I think it's pretty middle of the road. Um, I do like the accuracy perk. I'm a bit indifferent to the uh, armor damage perk. I would probably rank it behind the bulldozer, the ink explosion, and the neopunk in terms of being um, the best five-star purple guns. Um, so it is probably fourth out of, I think, eight or nine purple guns. Um, so yeah, pretty well in the middle. So, yeah, I think that is pretty much it that I've got for this video. Um, as always, I am awesome. Sorry, I am I am awesome. Um, but I am keen to hear from you guys, um, hear your thoughts about the Hero of the Month and the Weapon of the Month. Um, so please either jump down into the comments section of this video, write down your thoughts, um, or you can hit me on Discord. I've added an invite link to the Discord server, um, and the discussion can continue over there. Um, yeah, if you haven't already done so and you did like this video um, content, please do swing the video a like and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel as well so you can stay up to date and see all my other new content that I come up with. Um, but that's it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed and I will catch you all in the next video. Cheers. Bye.